Well, hi, welcome back. Today we're going to learn a little bit about Google Drawing, another application on the Google Drive. So we're going to click open our Google Drive. Remember, mine looks a little different than yours because I have a lot of teacher folders. Slide over to the new, open it up, slide down to more, slide over to one called Google Drawings. It's got kind of a red box and this circles in it. Click it open and you come up with Google Drawing. Remember the very first thing we always do is title it. This is going to call, be called Rusty Draws. It doesn't hurt to put a date on it. It'll help you retrieve it in case you have more than one file with a similar name. So today we're going to be drawing. It looks a lot like a regular Google Doc where you can write, but there are more picture features on this one. We're going to work, look up here on the shape and we're going to click that open. And you can see we have shapes right here. I slide down, I slide over. Everyone likes the happy face. We'll start with a happy face. You get a little plus sign. Click it down, drag it open, drop it, and you've got a little happy face. Going back up into the shapes, you can come down to arrows, which was we used when we did the food webs. Sliding over all kinds of arrows, but these are kind of fun here. They're kind of a three-dimensional one. Click down, drag and drop it, like this. Another shape that's fun to play with are the callouts. People like these for, say, speech bubbles. Same thing, you've got the little plus sign, you drag it over, click, open, drop, you have a speech bubble. Make it a little bigger, actually. So while I'm making it bigger, it's a good time to talk about it. The buttons around it, you need to have the buttons around to be able to move it. Like right now, I couldn't do anything, but once I click it, a box appears, then I can edit that piece. Well, I'm back over here on this one. So, one of the fa fancy ones is this one here with a little stick in the ball. That will actually rotate things like that. Just kind of fun with arrows, you can move them around. These buttons, of course, will make it bigger or smaller. But when you're working with an image, you want to make sure you grab the corner ones because when you pull the corner ones, it makes it bigger and smaller in proportion, which means it stays the same shape. If you grab one of these buttons on the side, you will make it long and skinny, but it's definitely changed the shape. This will matter more when you have like a picture, like a picture of a dog. You'll end up a very skinny dog or a very tall, fat dog. So whenever moving a picture, to resize it, always use corner buttons. When you get the plus sign, like that, that means you can actually move the image. But you have to have that plus sign to do that. So those are some basic games to play with the shapes. Um, Callouts, their banners, speech bubbles, the equation if you want to do some math. Now a fancy thing to do with one of these images is to go up to the T, which is the text box, click on that, come back to your speech bubble, drag and drop it within the boundaries of it, and you'll make a text box. It can say, hi, everyone. Now, I should probably make it a little bigger, but you can then highlight that. You can change the font color up here where there's a line that says text color. Most of them, when you put the cursor over, it'll tell you what they are. You can switch it to red. You can come over here where it says Arial. That's the name of the font. That's what the shape looks like. Click that. I'm going to get it in cursive, like a Pacifico. You can change the size, although my speech bubble is pretty small. I can't get a whole lot bigger. It's at 14 now. I'll try 24. But you can see how it makes it bigger. I'd have to make my drag my speech bubble a little bigger to get it back on the right line. But that's one way to play with your speech bubble so you can get your characters to talk. Another fun shape here is the line. If you click down the arrow next to it, you get all these different arrows. So I'm going to click on just a straight arrow. Ha, <laughs> straight arrow, get it. Click the arrow. Then I have the option to change the line color of the arrow. Once again, I seem to like red today. Red. I can change the weight, which is pretty cool. If I go way down to this 24, I end up with a really big arrow. Then you've got the dotted lines. You click those, and you can make it dotted, which, depending on what you're using for, it can be kind of neat. So the rest of the tools are very similar. Um, just remember, oops. And then, of course, there's the magic undo button. Got to learn that one. That's the back arrow. Click something, something happened I didn't want. I click that, and that disappears. The one you're all familiar with is the image button. It looks like a little mountain in a picture frame. You click on that, go to search. We're going to go to lion. Look for a lion. Say I like this picture here. I'm going to click on it. And I'm on top of it, but it says select right here. Is it not going to do that with me here? Hmm, interesting. Can I move me over? I can move me out of the way. Amazing. Selecting. There it goes. Move me out of the way again. There's the line. He's really big. So what we're going to do, we have to grab that corner arrow I told you about. Oh, it's just going to move it. Hang on. Boop. There, I've got to get that sideways arrow so I can reduce the picture. 
and I've got to keep reducing it so he's not taking over my whole picture. Sometimes you want them as a background, but usually you want a picture to use it as a small image like this, and you resize it so it fits within your, your workplace. So, this is Google Drawing. This is your first attempt. I want to see you practice some more, and let me see what you can do with that. Have fun.